Hey, what's going on YouTube? In this video, I'm going over my chase setup in order to get the maximum amount of ultimate reward points that I can with my spin. So before that, my name is Will. If you're new to this channel, I go over travel reward credit cards to help you guys travel more without breaking the bank. So if that's something that you're interested in, be sure to hit that little red subscribe button for more videos. All right, so I'm going to go over what my card setup was with Chase prior to COVID at the very beginning of 2020. And then I'm going to discuss, you know, those changes that have been made since then, now that we're here in February of 2021. So I'll just kind of give you guys my thoughts and opinions on it, but leave a comment down below what you guys think of the state of Chase credit cards right now, what you like, what you would like to see going forward, because I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a little spoiler. I do think they are going to make some changes to some of these cards as we come out of COVID. But before I get to that, let's go ahead and talk about these cards and how they were looking last year. So here are the four cards in my system in order to maximize the amount of points I earned and the value I got from those points. So the first card is that Chase Sapphire Reserve card, which is the most important card in the setup for a couple of different reasons. One, you get a 50% boost in your points when you use them to book travel through the Chase Travel Portal. And two, you get access to Chase's transfer partners such as Hyatt, which also give you a tremendous amount of value. Now you could replace the Chase Sapphire Reserve card with two other cards the Sapphire Preferred card or the Ink Preferred card. And I typically do recommend people pick up the Sapphire Preferred card first, just because of the higher sign-up bonus. And you can only have one Sapphire sign-up bonus within 48 months, so you might as well get the biggest one, and then upgrade to the Sapphire Reserve card after 12 months. But at the end of the day, I do think the Sapphire Reserve card gives you the most value long term. Now, the Sapphire Reserve card did have an annual fee of $550, which was offset a little bit by the travel credit of $300, making an effective annual fee just $250. And you also got 3x back on dining and 3x back on all travel purchases. The next two cards are Chase's main cashback credit cards for consumers, and that is the Freedom and Freedom Unlimited card. As we know, the Freedom card had the 5x quarterly rotating categories, and the Freedom Unlimited gives you 1.5x back on everything. Both had no annual fees. And then finally, we had the Chase Ink Cash card, and this was pretty much my main hitter in my wallet. It earned the most points every month with my spend. In this card, you have the 5x category for phone, cable, internet, streaming, and internet subs, which means like Netflix, Disney Plus, if you had to play the monthly fee for Microsoft Office, SiriusXM, all that stuff is covered under that internet subscription uh, 5X category. You get 5X back for office supply stores. And then finally, you get 2X back on gas. And this was at no annual fee. So definitely one of the cards I always recommended to people to pick up. And at the time, the sign-up bonus was $500, or in other words, 50,000 ultimate reward points once you spend $3,000 in spend within three months. So that's about a 17% return on your spend. So definitely a great card to have. Now, let's go ahead and look at what this is looking like now that we're in 2021. So now here's the same card set up now that we're in 2021. And as you can see, I've highlighted some of the changes since last year. Now, starting with that Chase Sapphire Reserve card, no changes uh, made to the card since last year. And I know there are a bunch of temporary benefits floating around, but those are just temporary. No permanent changes have been made to the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. And I will come back to that a little bit later. Next, we had the Freedom Flex card. So this is the card Chase just introduced in 2020 to replace the old Freedom card and really nothing but good benefits here. So first, it's gonna stay that no annual fee. You're still gonna get that 5X quarterly rotating categories. And then in addition to all that, you're gonna get 5X back on travel purchased through the Chase Rewards, 3X back on dining, and 3X back on drugstores. So really great cashback credit card that anyone can pick up right now. Now, it does kind of overlap with some of the benefits of the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, mainly that 3X back on dining, but this doesn't really bother me too much because at the end of the day, remember, the Freedom Flex card is a cashback credit card that kind of moonlights as a Travel Rewards credit card. The only reason we kind of count it as a Travel Rewards credit card is because Chase allows us to transfer our ultimate reward points between the Freedom Flex and the Chase Reserve card. So, you know, again, it is just a cashback credit card. So I'm not too upset about this changes. And really the way I look at this is I look at the entire system, the entire four card system here. So 
Although, you know, this is a duplicate benefit in that system, it's still a no annual fee credit card. I'm not adding anything into that total annual fee that I'm paying. And I'm only paying $550 for all four of these credit cards. And that's all with the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. So I'm not too upset about this. Um, even if the Chase Sapphire Reserve card were to get rid of that dining category, I wouldn't be really too upset about that at this point because the main benefit for me with the Sapphire card is going to be that 50% boost you get on the travel portal as well as access to the transfer partners. Those are the two main benefits that come with the Sapphire Reserve card. And that's just, you know, my personal opinion. If you guys have, you know, some other thoughts on this, please let me know down in the comments below. Now, just a disclaimer, I actually don't have the Sapphire Reserve card anymore. I got rid of it uh, towards the middle of 2020. And that was just kind of part of my plan because during this year, I'll be eligible for the Sapphire Reserve Cards sign-up bonus again. So that's why I kind of downgraded it last year because I do plan on applying for it sometime towards the end of this year just for the sign-up bonus. Now, sticking with the Chase Sapphire Reserve Card a little bit more, it is my belief or at least my hope that we'll start seeing some changes to the Sapphire lineup sometime later this year once we start getting past COVID and people start traveling again. So I think they're just kind of holding back on some making some permanent changes to the card until really people actually start using these benefits. Because you know, right now they have a lot of temporary things going on with the Sapphire cards, such as the reserve card, annual fee being lowered back down to that 450 temporarily. Uh, they have the grocery categories for both of the Sapphire cards. The pay yourself back has been really a great benefit in my opinion. So they have all these temporary benefits that are, are about to give or to expire um, towards the end of the spring of 2021. So, you know, after all that expires, maybe we'll start seeing some changes coming to the Sapphire cards um, because, you know, with the vaccine rolling out and whatnot, I think they're going to start getting more comfortable and I think people are going to be more comfortable traveling again. Now, I know a lot of people want to see that grocery category to stick and stay permanent with the Sapphire cards. And I'm kind of up in air about that. I'm leaning more towards it not happening and that's just because it doesn't really fit the you know travel theme going on with these two credit cards. I do think that Chase kind of missed the opportunity with the uh, Freedom Unlimited card because all I did was really copy the same benefits from the Freedom card to the Freedom Unlimited card and I feel like they just could have made the Inc. or the Freedom Unlimited card a grocery card maybe three four points back if you want to charge an annual fee fine but i feel like they kind of missed their opportunity there uh this is just again my opinion here but you know let me know down in the comments below what you guys think finally guys before i jump into that last card be sure to smash that like button if you're enjoying this type of content easy and free way to support the channel it helps with the youtube algorithm and i would greatly greatly appreciate it so the last card is that ink cash card now no major changes have been made to this card since last year it's it still has all the great benefits, but I guess because of the recession that we were in and that we're still really trying to get out of, I feel like Chase is really trying to restrict the people who are actually applying for this card. And that's because of the change to the sign-up bonus. So instead of that $500 that you were getting with $3,000 worth of spend, you're now have to getting $750, which is great, but you had to spend $7,500 in that same time frame of three months which I would imagine is not easy for a lot of people to do. I personally couldn't do it. I wish I made that type of money to spend that type of money within three months, but unfortunately, YouTube does not pay me that well. But yeah, it's $750 for $7,500 in spend. That's a 10% return on your spend compared to last year when you're getting a 17% return on your spend. And that's for both the ink cash and the Ink Unlimited card, and the Ink Preferred card is 100,000 points once you spend $15,000 within three months. So really an even worse sign-up bonus than what you would get with the other two cards. So this really got, throws a wrench into my strategy when it comes to the 524 um, chase rules and whatnot, because I usually do recommend people to keep a couple slots open to pick up two of these business cards before jumping onto that last car for their 524. But now that the sign-up bonus is so high in terms of the minimum spend, I'm not sure if I can really recommend it. Now, I do think people should still get the Ink Cash card, but you know, maybe getting either of the other two cards may not be really worth it to you anymore, just because of that high minimum spend and really the low return 
on the amount of spin that you actually get. All right, guys, so let me know down in the comments below what you think of the Chase ecosystem as it stands now and what you're hoping to see in the future. I'm still a pretty big fan of the Chase ecosystem. Like I said, I'm hoping to see some changes with the Chase Sapphire cards coming soon, but only time will tell. But thanks for watching, guys. Again, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe for more videos, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.